Okay, so chronic renal failure. This means that it's a chronic issue. It's not. Um, it's not um, a acute phase. It's, it's not something that's isolated to one incidence. We're talking about a chronic issue, like a. Uh, it's progressive. We've known it. We've seen it coming. That's what we call it: chronic renal failure (CRF). Now. What can make these kidneys break down? What can make your laundry machine, your, um, your washer machine break down? If you guys put mud or cement in your washer machine constantly, it's going to probably cause a breakdown of your washer machine. If you put way too much workload on it, too much pressure on it, probably going to cause a breakdown in your washing machines. So, if your patient's chronically hyperglycemic, too much sugar, hyper blood sugar, you have a lot of syrup, syrupy blood, it's not going to help your kidneys to constantly be working, you're going to exhaust your renals and then cause a breakdown, right? Same thing with hypertension. Too much pressure. Hypertension. High blood pressure, okay? Too much blood pressure too much pressure really frying your glomeruli, those little bubbles that filter out all of your blood, those little pockets of, um, uh, let's just say, little washing machine pockets that filter your blood. So how do we measure this chronic progressive disease here? Well, your patient might be a chronic diabetic with high blood sugar. Your patient might be a chronic congestive heart failure patient. High blood pressure. What if they're both? High blood pressure, high blood sugar. So now you have a lot of pressure and very syrupy blood and it's probably going to lead to not a lot of oxygen getting down to those kidneys and we're causing what's called a necrosis, a killing off of the function of your kidneys. So how bad is our chronic renal failure? Well, it's this bad. We go to the doctors and we say, hey, how do I test how bad my chronic renal failure is. How much of my washing machines are broken? Is it a small, medium, large, or extra large problem? You know, when you go to your next fast food or McDonald's, uh, or you go to the biscuit barn, okay? <laughs> I don't know where you live, but um, biscuit barn is pretty good on the East Coast. But if you guys go to your next restaurant, and you say, hey, I want a small, medium, or large, right? Or extra large. That's all we're saying with your stages of chronic renal failure. So how much percentage of our glomerular filtration rate still works? How much percentage of those little pockets that actually filter our blood are still working? Well, the first phase... Is your picture now? The first phase is 60 to 89% of, of your glomerular filtration rate still works, okay? That's what we're saying is, you know, your kidneys are working okay, but really we've only lost, um, you know, a little bit, okay? So this is, you know, chronic renal failure is a big problem, but you're in the first phase. So let's start lifestyle changes 
we can never get back those killed off glomeruli. They're dead. We're never going to be able to rejuvenate that. So we can stop the progression right here if we can stop it, okay? If we can't control this blood pressure, this constant pressure, if we can't control this blood sugar, we're going to progress all the way down to killing off our kidneys entirely and causing us to have 15% glomerular filtration rate. Okay? GFR. So, we can say our patient is in second stage of chronic renal failure or your patient is in third stage. It really just depends on how much progression is going along here. 30 to 60 percent of our kidney function still works. 50 to 30 percent for stage 3. Now in fourth stage, also called your end stage renal failure, that means that only 15 percent or less of your kidneys are working. Your kidneys are shot. They're done. There's no way to regenerate that debt. Just like if you put a rubber band around your finger and you suffocated all the oxygen out of your finger, okay? There's no way to rejuvenate or to bring that finger back to life once it's dead. Same thing as if, you know, you constantly burn out your washing machines. You constantly run it at a high speed. You put syrup in your washing machine. You put mud, thick mud in your washing machine. And you put a lot of pressure on your washing machine. And you completely fry the units. There's no way to replace that, guys. There's The only thing you can do is get another kidney, get a kidney transplant. Or we have to figure out another way to filter your blood. Kind of replace these kidneys that we've lost. Because if we don't do anything, that fluid is just going to rise up in your body and all those toxins are not going to be able to get out of your body and into the potty. There's no way for us to go urine anymore. There's no way for us to metabol I'm sorry, there's no way for us to excrete our drugs. There's no way for potassium to get out of our body anymore other than going, you know, number two, going poo-poo. Um, we're constantly going to be at a fluid volume overload because we have way too much fluid and we're not going to be able to excrete anything. So with your patients in end-stage renal failure, we have two options. We have dialysis or we have a kidney transplant. And kidney transplants don't go all that well. You might reject a kidney. You have to take these um, anti-immune drugs that constantly suppress your immune system to prevent your immune system from attacking that kidney. Um, you know, it's pretty tough with a kidney transplant. With your dialysis patients, you have two options. You can do hemodialysis, which puts a fat shunt in your arm, or you can do peritoneal dialysis, just means that we're putting fluid in your peritoneal space. So let's go into those, and I'm going to talk about those right now.